Greetings, this is m squared, and we're going to graph some step functions. Sometimes they're called greatest integer functions. And it's important to know that it's, you know, that the original function, the parent function, looks like this, where you have a little, kind of like a steps, step system going on. Greatest integer function means that, well, this would be one, two, three, kind of thing. Here. So if you know that this is what it's supposed to look like, that's really important because let me focus this, it seems a little off focus. Um, you need to know that there's a closed circle on the left of each interval, there's an open circle on the right, and that this goes up, and that it's always a whole number. Unless, of course, you have some like a half out here or something. You might have halves, but unless it's manipulated, you know, horizontally, vertically stretched, something like that, it's always going to be an integer. So whether you're at 0.5 or 0.3 or 0.2, all of those go to zero. So that's why what, whatever you're in here between zero and one, your your line is at one on the y value. I mean zero. And up here, if you're like at one and a half, you're still at one. So it goes down to the integer to the left of whatever it is. So keeping that in mind, if you have a function then that you know moved, remember what this moves, this moves right 1 and up 3. So I take this little piece right here that I know usually goes like this and I move it up 1, I mean right 1 and up 3 and I just put it there. And then nothing else changed vertically or horizontally, nothing flipped over the y or x-axis. So I can just keep going with a closed circle on the left open circle on the right, and then fill in. Now over here, I haven't shifted left, right, or up, or down, but I've vertically stretched it. So let's think about what that means. If you want, it might be helpful to write a little t-chart. Now this has three bars because I want to show you. I want this to be the x, and then I want this to be the greatest integer function, and then I want to be this I want this to be two times it. I'm going to break it down. So let's just count by one half. So let's say I'm at 0, then at 0 0.5, then at 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5. We'll just do a few. So if I'm at 0, obviously this is 0, and 2 times 0 is 0. But if I'm at a half, remember it goes to the integer below a half. So that means 0, and again, 2 times 0 is 0. If I'm at 1, then this is 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. But if I'm at 1 and a half, I go to the integer below it, which is 1. So I'm still at 2 over here. And then at 2, I'm at 2, which would be 4. And at 2.5, I'd still be at 2. And then I'd be still at 4. So let's graph those little points. So at 0, 0, I'm still at 0. Closed circle on the left open circle on the right, like this. But notice, once I get to 1, I don't go up to 1, I go up to 2. So see how it vertically stretched it? Instead of being a gap of 1, like it traditionally is, it's a gap of 2 because of that 2 out there. So that might be helpful. And if I was going this way, it'd be the same way. Just a gap of 2. And so that is how you'd graph that the 2 times the greatest integer of x. So step by step, and I think it's really helpful to make a t-chart with three things so that you can see where you're going. But some people might just say, oh, I know that it vertically stretched at 2, so I'd skip 2. You can think of it that way too. Good luck with that. M squared signing out.